So, hello. Uh, welcome to the last episode. It's actually the bonus part, bonus episode. I'm just calling it that way because it's probably beyond the time, <laughs> but it's still interesting. So, what we want to do last here is we want to use um, MPS annotations or attributes. And there's a very interesting concept. So, what we can do with this is we can att attach additional data, model properties, children, whatever, to existing elements without modifying them in their language definition. So let me show what this means. Here we have the uh, entities language, back to the beginning. And we can now press Alt-Enter and select such a mapping and can now put uh, ba -ba -bum, the mapping to databases right into the entity table. Now, you might remember or you might think this looks similar to what we did with the validated UIs, where we created a new language which created kind of sub-concepts uh, of the original languages field. So we that's not what's happening here. What's happening here is quite interesting. And uh, so the interesting thing is that the original language, the entities language, has not been changed. And there is also no sub-language entities uh, persistence that contains this information. Rather, we have created this RHEL mapping annotations language, which defines a new language concept. It's called attribute to call mapping, attribute to color mapping. And the interesting thing is that it extends MPS's predefined concept node attribute. Node attributes are things that can be attached to existing language elements, or their instances more specifically, without changing the definition to make it possible. So this says there is an attribute to call mapping, which has a reference to a column, which is what we'd expect. And it can be attached to attributes under the name attribute to call mapping. So we can now define an intention toggle call mapping, you know, that's the intention is what happens if you press um, Alt Enter here, that's the intention. And it uses the name of this thing, which, um, you know, we've defined here in the role. And it uses the at sign because the at sign is a way of uh, reaching these attributes, which, which behave like normal child relationships, except that they have not been defined in the original uh, element. So node, in this case, is um, an entity attribute. And if we go to an entity attribute, what's the quickest way, then this doesn't know anything about the fact that it can have a child named uh, adder to call mapping of type adder to call mapping, capital A. So, but we can still uh, do it. So, so, so what this does, what this intention does is if you select it and uh, it basically creates a new instance of this adder to call mapping. So that's exactly what happens if I press Alt Enter here. It creates this new ob object, which is of course empty. And then once you're here, right, uh, let me see, then you do, you kind of select the column you want to point to. So that's normal MPS behavior. Now the question is, how do you think, wh how does this work editor-wise? Why does this show up kind of at the end? Uh, the, the trick is, once again, simple if you know how it, how it works. And uh, the editor for the attribute to call mapping embeds the editor of the attributed node, which is kind of the node to which we've added this kind of special child. And as you can see, it uh, uses the attributed node, then it has this arrow and then the column. So if we change that to, let's say, maps to, right, and we ba -ba -bum, rebuild the language. to say something otherwise it's too quiet I guess right then you have this maps to here so um, this is how it works so using this approach you can add all kinds of additional data to existing model elements without changing them now maybe this reminds you of something let me show you a generator mm -hmm. entities Java you may remember how we do generators Generators, these templates, are ordinary, in this case, Java classes. We write code manually that serves as an example, and then we add those macro things. And those macros are annotations, right? So you can take any element, press Alt-Enter, and add a node macro. 
written, like for example, copy source. And that guy then uh, is attached to the, in this case, constructor in the same way as we have just annotated or attached our um, persistence mapping column pointer. And using this approach, you can combine or you can put in additional data into any language without changing it. For me, this is the, the coolest way of language composition in MPS because it supports non-invasiveness and it's cross-cutting. By using the super type of things or using macro interfaces, you can kind of attach it to any kind of node you're interested in. Very, very interesting, very cool, very flexible. We've used it for requirements traces. We've used it for presence conditions, for uh, product line kind of stuff. Very interesting. Okay, so this... Um, concludes our um, tutorial on MPS language composition. If you like it, the videos um, will be at YouTube as well. I will put the URLs into the write-up for the tutorial, which is uh, available in the workshop proceedings, and certainly also somewhere, somehow from uh, my website, feldo.de, for those people who see this who are not at the workshop. Thanks for watching. I hope it was interesting. If you have questions, send me an email, filter at acm.org. That's V-O-E-L-T-E-R at acm.org. Thanks. Bye.